is up everyone so today is January 16th and it's a it's a really nice day actually it's very mild the Sun is out on and off and I'm kind of puttering around doing little random things and in here I have some grow lights so I don't know what took me so long to get more grow lights. I think I was a little bit intimidated about having to make my own setup because this is a setup from Gardener Supply, I think. So it's all pre-made and you just assemble it yourself. And I've just been nervous to do my own thing. And I saw these on Amazon for 40 bucks. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it. I already have these shelves. I did buy these for my business last winter, mostly for storage for like my jars and things like that. And so I decided, let's get some more grow lights. Like, why why not? <laughs> so I definitely think that it will be very impactful for me. So I'm going to set these up. And I also thought I'd give you a little bit of an update on what the farm looks like outside. Uh, because I don't think I've shown you guys for a while and I want to show you the ranunculus all right so I should have four lights in here but my shelf is four shelves but that means three lights I live in a house that was built in the 1920s and there's two things that are typically a challenge with older houses first is a lack of storage space so most people don't have a lot of closets and thankfully I have an okay amount of storage space but the one thing that we were looking at is the outlets. So old houses are notorious for not having a lot of outlets. And thankfully, whoever rewired this house put in a bunch. So I've got all kinds in here. This foyer has a plug-in, and there's one right around the corner and one right there. So we're good. And I want to show you a little hack. Uh, this is a Christmas light timer that I got at Walmart for like 10 bucks for my Christmas lights. And it's like the perfect timer for grow lights so don't spend a bunch of money on this if you don't have to oh wow this is gonna be easy setup these are LED so they should last a while too and be low energy usage oh whoops already messed up okay this is the kind of stuff that I like easy setup literally one screw into this little hanger thing clamp it on good to go. I like that kind of stuff. And you know it's a good sign when <laughs> they give you zip ties. It's my kind of setup. Cool, I like this. <laughs> I probably should get like some chains so I can adjust them, but meh, we'll figure that out later. Alright, so I got two each daisy chain together, and then we'll plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Also, I could adjust these shelves to change the spacing, but man, these are really on the little adjusters, so I'll leave them for now. Not, it's too much of a pain. Woo! Okay. Okay. Oh, please stop. Why are we flickering? Oh, my lights. My eyes. My eyes. Why, why are we flickering? There we go. That looks better, huh? Yes, this is so much more grow light space. Now we're really cooking with gas. This is, this is very exciting. So, let's go outside. Let's take a look at what's going on out there. Okay, before we go outside, one last thing. Let's look at how it's doing. So, it's been 10 days since I sowed these seeds. And we're getting germination. Snapdragons look great. I got a little bit of eucalyptus that's germinating. So, that is great. And then, this is also snapdragons germinating. And this is the Rudbeckia triloba. Here's the temperature information. It's about 65 degrees in here. That's where it's been since I opened up the foyer. And it's germinating just fine. So, we're good. Okay, first things first. I know it's only been a week. But I did take the jugs into the greenhouse. Uh, because we had hydro, hydrologic, hydrologic outlook. Pretty much all week. Which basically means like risk of flooding. Um, because it was very rainy. 
So these were getting super, super saturated, so I took them in here so that they won't get so wet. And I am seeing some seeds, you know, put out the little first root. So it's looking good in the neighborhood over here. And I'm working on sowing some more seeds uh, because I got grow light spaced out. So yeah, let's see. Looking at the plan here. Ooh, today I'll probably sow more fever food because I did jug sow those, but I'm really depending on fever food in my bouquet recipes for this next summer. So I want to make sure that I have some going. And now that I have the space, we're going to do that. Uh, the other thing I'm probably going to sow is some um, Rebecca, the Indian summer one, which is just the regular one because I'll show you in a second. My overwintered ones are not not doing so hot. So let's come and look over here. So here is the 2022 farm, and I have literally done nothing to it. I let the freeze come and, and kill everything, and then I left it. And I don't really know what to do. So let's take a look at these snapdragons. This is really what I want to show you. So these are really tall, uh, and I feel like I should cut them back so that they'll do a new flush. But I mean, do I really want to cut these back right now? Yeah, probably. I don't know, I'm just worried it might delay them too much, so... I don't know, what do you think I should do? Cut them back or leave them? This is kind of a funny thing. So this is a straw flower head that I just left, and look, the seed is germinating in the pod here. So, yeah, I think uh, winter sowing itself over here. And the yarrow is uh, loving its life. Look at this, it's getting ready to flower. Relax. So out of all my winter sowing, the one that seems to be doing the best is Agristema. So this looks pretty great, looking awesome. My Larkspur is doing okay, but it's getting attacked by the slugs. And uh, let's see here. Oh, so we got some Bupleurum that was growing here, but it's getting soggy and also attacked by slugs. So, yeah. Not so impressed with the fall sewing. Fall sewing that's doing well is Orlea. Look at that. Doesn't that just look really happy? But I made a mistake and I covered these beds with leaves and that was not a good decision. I think it attracted slugs and suffocated the plants. So this is my Dianthus that's doing okay. But my stock, I think that might be stock. No, it's, it's not great, and the kale's gone as well. And that was the problem I had here with the Indian Summer Rudbeckia, so that's all completely gone. So here is what I'm really excited about. Check out my ranunculus. It is doing awesome. There's a couple mushrooms in here. Meh. But yeah, doesn't it look great? So I pretty much don't really open this up because the sun doesn't come out very often. Uh, so on days that are very sunny, like today's been pretty sunny on and off, I'll open it up so it gets some airflow. But this secession was my uh, September secession, so it's doing really well. And remember, I did not soak these, I did not pre-sprout these, I just took the corms and put them directly into the soil. I mean, it looks fine. And then let's look at the second secession. My bad, just looked at the label. That was the October secession. This was my November secession. This November secession has just now really started to sprout, um, but it is sprouting. So again, these were not pre-soaked, not pre-sprouted, just put right into the ground in November and October. This is the first secession of anemones that were planted in October. I just put a little bit of leaf mulch down, but they really don't need it. And these have been uncovered as well because I'm a little bit short on short frost cloth and I don't want to cut any more. And these really don't need to be covered. They're cool with being exposed to the elements. So I think it looks great. Really excited about this. Let's look at the final secession. So this was my mid-November secession of ranunculus and some straggler anemone corms that I had. So I just think these are looking great. And uh, this one here is the rarity anemone. So it's just now really starting to put up some sprouts. And this is the anemone corms that I saved from last year. So they're just now putting up some stems or some sprouts as well. So this, in theory, should give me blooms for quite a while, especially since we have very cool springs. So I think that I should get six weeks at least, maybe even more, on ranunculus. So I'm really, really excited about that. Aw, look at the symbiosis. So cute. 
So the new beds are just chilling. Um, they are growing weeds. I'm sure you probably can see them from here. So taking my time and going through and hoeing each row and then I'm just putting down some leaf mulch so that it's not exposed and this will help fertilize as well. So the second part that I'm trying to make new beds on, I think you can see there's still some kind of alive growth. So this is taking a very long time to kill off the grass. So I think in the next couple months I'll be able to turn this over, double dig these beds, and then hopefully won't have a bunch of weeds in here. But that's okay, there's no rush there. My goal this year is to not buy any more compost because that's incredibly expensive. So I'm using what I have and uh, these ladies here are helping me out. So their poop and their bedding is helping me build a nice compost pile. So hopefully I'll be able to use that on these beds here and I won't have to worry about it. All right, I'm gonna sow a second succession of cool flowers, hardy annuals. So thanks so much for tuning in to my updates and uh, let me know. Are you getting ready to sow seeds? Are you already sowing seeds? How's it going? Are you looking forward to this year? I think it's going to be a good year. Fingers crossed, at least. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Wasted no time sowing more seeds. So, so happy about this. Woo!